Hello, everybody. So I got, what is it? Five, 10 minutes in between my classes. And so I was like, screw it. As per usual, let me go ahead and film a video. Sources in the description box below. I think this is day 16 or 17. Day 17 of these daily videos. I just have a very interesting question. So John Kerry... It's like a garbage truck outside. So John Kerry, apparently he's going to be on Biden's team now. However, one of the people that he's going to be working with is one of the top recipients for fossil fuel money out of the entire Democratic Party. The person I am referring to is Cedric Richmond. So if he's one of the top recipients of fossil fuel money and he's going to be working with John Kerry, how exactly does this work? Well, I don't have an exact answer for you. However, there are some like similarities and differences between the two. So for example, John Kerry opposed the Keystone Pipeline and Cedric Richmond uh, supported the Keystone Pipeline, which, you know, destroys the, uh, the environment in those areas going essentially throughout uh, North America, more or less supplemented with uh, just like <laughs> massive oil disasters, to paraphrase this whole thing. However, I decided to look through about, and I mean like literally, I think it was 30 to 40 House resolution, well, House and Senate resolutions and bills to kind of scan through this while I was taking a break once upon a time. Don't ask me why I did this. I've I have no idea why I did this, but here's a couple things that Cedric has uh, supported. So he supported permanently banning uranium mining in Grand Canyon. Okay. Ban drilling off Atlanta, Pacific, and the Gulf of Mexico. All right. Block Trump from leaving Paris Climate Agreement, which that one's pretty sketchy anyway, because we knew that he was going to be able to get through it anyway. So the question is, is Cedric actually like, does, does he actually think his vote's mattering or is he only voting in support of opposing something when he knows it's not going to matter? Did I just make any sense? Let me try to rephrase that. Is he only supporting or opposing things when his votes aren't going to have as significant of an impact? For example, Paris Climate Agreement. He took that much money from fossil fuel industries and he knows that Trump is going to do it anyway. So he's like, well, might as well just go ahead and oppose Trump because I know he's going to do it anyway. I don't know. I don't know. That's just a food for thought. I guess that's what the point I'm trying to make is how exactly does this, how exactly do these things affect him? Now, there is something called the League of Conservation Voters. So they kind of give people track records, kind of like the NRA does with guns. And so in terms of his lifetime, he has 76% support. So is he get like a 76% to a C on his lifetime, uh, his lifetime grade on the environment. So John Kerry's for perspective is a 91%. Now in 2019, this individual, Richmond, received a 93%. So he jumped up from like a C to an A from his track record throughout his life up until uh, 2019. Well, I guess thinking out loud through this in real time, I suppose John Kerry's probably more in the long along the lines of like we need to do something right now. Richmond is probably like mm, let's uh, let's just stop back like stop stop back let's just stop and think about this just for a second. And Biden's probably like weighing on one side, which is the corporations, and he's probably weighing the other side, which is Kerry, and he's probably going to do something in the middle. My question is, can the environment wait for inter incremental change? And I get it. There's going to be people who are going to come out and say, well, it's better than nothing. Well, that's true too. I mean, if I, I'd rather get stabbed in the leg than shot in the face, sure. But does that exactly help the situation? Are we doing enough? Well, I believe we have already passed the point of no return, which is the amount of carbon in the atmosphere that we have to make sure does not get into the atmosphere because once it's in there, it's there for good and it continues to heat up the environment. I believe we've already passed that. If we haven't already passed it, we're about to pass it right now. Is incremental change good enough? And if you think it's not good enough, should Richmond still be on Biden's team? If it's not good enough and Richmond shouldn't be on his team, then we have to ask ourselves, why is Richmond there? I don't know. I'm going to continue to think about this. 
Food for thought.